Hi, I'm Anna from Accessible Interiors. I'm an occupational therapist and I also do a lot of work with home design and home styling. And today I'm going to be doing a video for AppCam and I'm going to be talking about how we can make small changes to our home environments in order to improve our sleep. I think sleep is an issue that a lot of people are having problems with at the moment. It's quite understandable in the current situation with anxiety being at an all time high. So I just wanted to share with you some of the recommendations I make to my clients about what we can do to change our environments in order to improve our sleep. So when I'm, when I'm talking to clients about sleep, one of the first things that I suggest is that they have a look at their bedroom or their sleeping space and make sure that it's a calm, relaxing environment to be in. I often suggest to people that they should try and declutter as much as possible. And I think it's important to remember that when we're trying to get to sleep at night, we need our minds to be as clear as possible. So if we're surrounded by a room that's hectic and full of lots of things, that can be quite difficult to do. So it's always quite useful to have a good look at everything that's in your room and just have a think about whether it needs to be there. And if it does, does it need to be visible? So investing in things like underbed storage or lidded baskets can be a really good option just so that you can store everything away so that when it is that you're trying to get to sleep at night, you've got no, no distractions around you. I also think it's really important that you've got a bedroom that you like and you enjoy being in. Maybe just think about what you've got in your bedroom, having some nice photographs, having some having a nice wall colour that is nice relaxing and that you really enjoy. And if you're a young person, maybe you can have a bit of say in the decorating of your room or the layout of your bedroom and just making sure that it's a space that you want to be in. A lot of people, a lot of people like to have bold colours and bold prints in their bedrooms and although that's fine I would just consider that if you are going to be doing that just think about where it is that you're putting big posters and bold wallpapers. Try and keep the, the, space, the wall opposite you so that when you're lying down in your bed at night the wall that you see and the ceiling above you try and keep them nice calm and clear spaces so that if you're using colours on your wall use calm colours for those areas and if you want to use busy posters or bold prints then maybe put them on the wall behind your bed so that they don't distract you at night. One of the things that is really important to consider is the temperature of your bedroom. I think some people forget that actually our bodies like it to be quite cool when we're trying to get to sleep and we actually sleep much better in colder rooms. The research suggests that we we sleep better in rooms that are 65 degrees or under. So just think about this and see whether perhaps throughout the day you can open up the windows and get some fresh air in or invest in a fan or a air conditioning unit, or maybe just think about your bedding. And if you like to be warm when you first get into bed at night, then maybe layer your bedding so that you can remove the remove some covers throughout the night as you start to get hot. I think the last thing that is the most important thing to consider is about lighting. And by that, I mean soft lighting. We need to make sure that when we're going to bed at night that we start to wind down and that we stop our brains becoming too overactive. The white, stark, bright lights can really cause our brains to kind of wake up and be, be too stimulated and we want to try and get away from that. Investing in a dimmer switch, a table lamp or fairy lights or a colour changing light bulb is a really good option. I know a lot of people are using the orange light bulbs which help to trick your mind into thinking it's dusk so that might be worth a try. And if you've got bright street lights outside your windows or you get woken up by the morning sun, then maybe invest in a pair of blackout curtains or a blackout blind or try an eye mask. But it's just really important to think about the lighting and making sure that we're preparing ourselves for bed and that we're not overstimulating our brains when we're trying to relax. Um, the last thing that I just wanted to say is about use of electronic devices in the bedroom. I think most people know that that, that is a big no-no and that we need to stay away from the blue lights wherever possible. Ideally, you should be leaving your bed, your phones or tablets outside of your bedroom and you should not be looking at any screens for an hour before you go to bed. How I'm, however, I understand that young people find this quite difficult and feel quite attached to their phones or maybe even for safety reasons want to have their phones near them. So if you really can't separate yourself from your phone, then at least maybe try and change your phone screen to the night mode, which is a um, yellowy, orangey kind of... Um, screen which helps a little bit to reduce the amount of the effect of the blue light and helps to wind your brain down a little bit more. Okay so I hope you found those tips helpful. If you've got any particular comments or questions then please contact me and I will try and 